All right, and hello everyone today. Today we'll be looking at a tool called Brute Spray. It is an interesting little tool developed by two individuals named uh, Shane and Jacob. Uh, I've actually had the pleasure of working with both of these in the past. And um, yeah, so what is Brute Spray? Well, Brute Spray is a Python script that is uh, designed to help you out with a uh, password guessing, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, what does it do? Well, it takes an input file. Currently, it can only take the input file from InMap in the form of a GNMap file or an XML file. It takes that, it parses it apart, looks at what services are in there, and then it calls Medusa on each one of those services uh, with either a built-in word list or one that you provide it to see if it works, if it can guess the password if one of those works, and then it will give you a nice output so you can use that in the rest of your pen testing or whatever. Uh, you wish to do with that. Uh, Brute Spray is uh, licensed with the MIT uh, license, so you have that. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Brute Spray is, if you're using Kali, it's already available for you. You don't have to uh, download, you don't have to uh, uh, compile it or anything like that. It's part of the app uh, repo, so if you do app search, uh, Brute Spray, I can type it, and there it is, Brute Spray. Or if you're like me and you like to install everything from a command line or from the latest uh, GitHub, there is a GitHub for it. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. Um, this is out on Shane's uh, GitHub page. So you can go and grab it from there and install it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's see the end of the directory. So you've got a few different things here. Let's uh, clear the screen and Let's look at that requirements file. It looks like it requires uh, probably, what is that, seven different requirements. First one being arg complete, then pi screenshot, pi tesseract, uh, lxml, request, pillow, and beautiful soup four. So I'll go ahead and ins install this here. Pi, uh, pip install dash r requirements. And I've already went through this before, so I've already got them all installed. That's great. If you haven't got them all installed, it'll download them and install them. It'll take a few minutes there. Uh, so now that we've got that, so let's go ahead and clear the screen again. And let's take a quick look at it with the dash H, which is the standard for a help file. So let's see, there is a nice little ASCII art at the top here. Very nice, very nice. You can see it's uh, created by Shane Young and Jacob, uh, and Jacob Robles. Uh, inspired by Leon Johnson and credit is given to the developer of Medusa there. Very good. Looks like the standard uh, command line options are the dash H if you wish. The only other one that seems to be required is the dash F in the file. That would be the uh, GNMAP or the XML file that it would um, parse. You could specify an output directory. Uh, yes, containing successful attempts the uh, service that you want to target, how many threads you want to run, what host do you want to target, a user list or a user name, depending on if you're doing uppercase or lowercase u. Same thing with passwords. Capital P, you, you specify a password file, or lowercase p, it's a single password. Then you have the dash C and the dash I. Dash C says continuous, so keep brute forcing even after you obtain a success. Dash I is interactive. Uh, when I tested this before, or when I've used this before, I should say, the interactive is uh, probably a reasonable name for it. I probably personally would have named it wizard mode because it's more like a wizard for any other application that steps you through step-by-step step how to execute the command. Um, since this is going to need a inmap file to uh, start, I need to produce one. I've installed a um, Metasploitable 2 VM on my network, so I'll go ahead and start scanning that. Give it a dash V. I want to do it with the version checks. Let's go 192. Uh, let's give it an output file. I'm just going to call it test, and I'm targeting 192.168.10.23, which happens to be the IP of my Metasploitable install. Let this run. All right, now that that's finished, uh, as with the, as expected with the Metasploitable 2 install there, there's a lot of different services and whatnot running there. 
So let's go ahead and look at the uh, command line options again. Fruit spray dash H. Okay, for this, there's any number of different ones I could provide, but the one I'm going to go with is give it the file of test.xml, and then I'm doing the interactive mode. So go ahead and hit that. And um, it says there, leave in an option blank. We'll leave it empty and refer to default. So very good. I'm going to go ahead and look at, look at this. There's two different FTP installs, uh, one on port 21 and one on 2121. It identified both. That's great. Uh, VNC, Postgres, a number of them there. Which services do you want to brute? If I if I could type in specifically or I could hit enter to set them all. I'll just do that. How many parallel threads? I'll go with five for right now. Uh, how many hosts? Well, I only have one host that I scan, so one is fine. Uh, do I want to specify a word list? No, I do not. Do I like to specify a single username or password? No, I would not. And now it's off and running. All right. Well, that was a lot of output there. If you're familiar with Medusa at all, uh, you would definitely recognize this uh, output here. We could scroll back up through here and see if there was any successes. As it was running, you could have grepped for the app through the output for anything that contains success, things of that, that nature. Or if you look in the directory here, there's a subdirectory called brute spray dash output. So let's jump into there. And in here, you'll see there's a files created based on the service that was targeted and if there was any successes. So let's go ahead and uh, look at some of these. First one there is uh, FTP access. Looks like user is anonymous. And password is, well, various different ones there. My guess is it is anonymous FTP and you can provide it any password and it would work. Our login. Uh, admin one two three four five six that well there's a number of those there um, possibly we could definitely try that I'm guessing that's going to probably be a false positive as it's unlikely that the admin user would have that many different possible passwords for it then we have Postgres which is just Postgres Postgres very likely then you have uh, VNC so let's go ahead and uh, try the VNC here VNC viewer 192, 168, 10, 23, and we'll provide one of those passwords of password. And lo and behold, it lets us in. Very nice. So let's try that with the FTP. Uh, 192, 168, 10, 23. Let's try. And let's just give it whatever. And it let us in. Very good. So that yes, seems to be working uh, fairly accurately there. Um, uh, if you're interested in this tool or you want to give it a good try out there, go out to their GitHub page. Uh, it'll be in the show notes. Check it out. Download it. If you're on Kali, you can just do the uh, app install root spray. If you find any issues with it or you want to give them a shout out, uh, feel free to do so. And um, yeah, happy uh, pen testing out there, everyone. And uh, catch you next time. Thank you.